So what we do in the lab uh, here at the Daily Research Center is we can pull those T cells out of tumors from patients. Uh, we do a little work with mice, but we try and do most of our experiments with patient material so that we know that we're looking at the real thing. And I, this is a complicated figure, but we can run those T cells through something called a flow cytometer, which allows us to uh, find out more about them. What, act, what is their state of activation? Are they proliferating, like dividing? Are they, do they have the, uh, the weapons that they need to fight the tumor? So can, have they got the toxic compounds that they need to inject into tumor cells, et cetera? And by doing these kind of studies from a large number of patients, what we've learned is that the T cells, the, the soldiers, are activated, they're proliferating, but they show signs of exhaustion. And it's a scientific term, but it means exactly what it means uh, uh, out in the real world as well. They're tired. Uh, they've, uh, they've spent all their weapons. Uh, they're on their last legs. They're at risk of dying. Uh, and, and we can see that there's just this one marker in particular called PD-1 which if that's found on a T cell, it tells you that's a tired T cell. So if you think about it, this tumor, these tumors have been developing for five or 10 years in patients. The immune system has been fighting it the whole time. So it's literally like the Iraq war, or the Afghanistan war, you're 10 years in, you're losing the battle, and you've got some tired soldiers. But we can, we can help. This is just another image. Um, that basically backs that up. For the sake of time, I'll just keep going forward. So this is what we want the battlefield to be. We want, you know, strong soldiers punching. But what we think really is going on when patients first come in uh, is we've got a stalemate. Uh, immune systems probably help to keep the tumor in control for some period of time. Uh, but the T cells are exhausted, they're confused, and they're not, they're not winning the battle. So that's where immunotherapy comes in. How can we reverse things? So with most cancers, the next thing that would happen, you'd have your surgery, uh, and then often you have chemotherapy. So uh, how many people think uh, throwing chemotherapy into the, onto the battlefield would help the immune response? And then I'll ask how many think it's going to inhibit the immune response. So let's talk about who thinks chemo might help the immune system. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who thinks chemo might hurt the immune response? Okay, you're all wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's the general perception. It's it's true in one sense, but not in the important sense. So chemo does knock down your white blood count. Clearly it does that. It's mostly your neutrophils that get, that get hit though. And those are not involved in fighting your cancer. So it's not a, not a big deal. If we look at the T cells and the B cells, and this is a study we've just completed and we're just writing the paper up to submit. Um, I won't go through the details, but basically those soldiers that we've been looking at, on average actually increase in the tumor after chemotherapy. So these are patients who generously donated tumor samples before and after they had chemo so that we could study this. So chemo, that's the good news, is we haven't been damaging things. We've probably been helping a little bit. But these aren't huge increases, so you know, I don't think chemo is, is going to be sufficient. <coughs> so this is where we get to immunotherapy. After patients had chemo, what can we do to really supercharge the immune response? That's what I'm interested in doing. Patients, you know, they should eat well, they should get exercise, they should get rest, meditate, do all the things that they know are good for themselves, but we, we can do more than that, ultimately, to really get these T-cell responses charged up. So among the three approaches, one is called immune modulation, and this is turning the volume up to 11 on the immune system using various drugs that have become available. So you just ramp up the immune response and you hope and, and in many cases find that you actually get a better anti-tumor response. And so there's a, a new class of drugs, immune modulators. Big Pharma is very excited about these, as are we on the research side. So there's one called PD-1 blockade, which basically uh, uh, 
disrupts the conversation between the tumor cell and the T cell and blocks one of the strategies used by tumors to exhaust the T cells. It blocks this PD-1 molecule that I showed you earlier. And in melanoma, where this has first been tested, they are seeing over 50% of advanced melanoma patients having major tumor regressions, if not cures in some cases, as a result of this drug, or family of drugs. So very exciting. Vaccination is next. Uh, this is my cheesy guitar analogy, but uh, if, if Sean can play the clash during his video, then I'm going to use a little bit of <laughs> rock and roll analogy too. So vaccination is, um, I'm showing a guitar player, it's basically, you know what a vaccine is, it's, it's exposing the immune system to the enemy and helping teach it what patterns to recognize, etc. There's the guitar analogy. But the real big guns approach that we're developing here is called adoptive cell therapy. So this would be your Marshall stack of amplifiers to uh, really make a, a loud, overwhelming immune response. And I'll explain what that is uh, on a medical, from a medical perspective in a minute. But this analogy also is meant to illustrate that these things are not uh, meant to be separate, but you can actually put them together uh, to get really uh, awesome rock show going on in the tumor. Okay, so adoptive cell therapy, the big guns, involves taking T cells from the patient, either from their blood or from the tumor sample. So taking those tired soldiers and then giving them a, vac a vacation, a furlough in the lab where we uh, grow them, give them all the goodies that they like, make them happy again. They start proliferating and we create ultimately an IV bag full of T cells now, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 11th T cells. And that is then infused back into the patient so they've gone from having maybe a million T cells fighting their tumor to having 100 billion T cells. And those T cells are now activated and, and happy. So this is working really well in melanoma. Uh, they're getting over 50% response rates in the patients. Uh, it's working extremely well recently in leukemia. Uh, uh, this is a bit of a twist on it where they actually genetically engineer the T cells. So it's yet another level of complexity. But in Pennsylvania, they've been doing this, and they've now recently reported uh, they're getting on the order of 14 out of 22 kids with leukemia are having complete durable remissions. That's as close as we get to saying cure in, in this business uh, with kids with otherwise fatal leukemias. So two thirds of them are on track to be cured by T cells alone. So this is why we're, we're excited about immunotherapy. So what do we want to do here in Victoria and Vancouver? We're doing this as a provincial program. Uh, titled my talk, Curing Cancer with T-Cells. That's our goal. And so the idea is take a patient's tumor sample. With our genome center, we can sequence the tumors to find all the mutations in the tumor. That's our link with Genome DC, who's one of the sponsors of this event. And then identify T cells that recognize those mutations in the tumor, expand them in the lab to those large numbers, and then infuse them into the patient along with immune modulation to get that full rock show uh, uh, happening against the tumor. <coughs> and to do that, we're currently trying to build a T cell production unit here in Victoria at the Dealey Research Center. And this is just a snapshot of, of what such a unit will look like when you're growing T cells that are actually going to go back into a patient, you've heard today how careful uh, we need to be, want to be when treating patients. And so, uh, of course, the T cells have to be super clean and, and not going to cause any harm. So we need to raise a couple million bucks to, um, to build the proper facility to do this. And, and we're on our way to doing that. So to summarize, the immune system responds to cancer patients are right, they've known it all along, and we've now been able to give evidence for that. And this leads to increased patient survival already. But unfortunately, the immune system becomes exhausted over time. But good news is, exhaustion can be reversed for, with new drugs. And, uh, but we need more than that. So by applying genomic methods, we're able now to identify the mutations that are being recognized by the immune system. And this puts us in control again so that we can develop personalized T-cell therapy for patients. 
and it's not only feasible, but it offers the promise of really potent and precise treatments um, with, with much lesser side effects, we think, in the long run, and, and can be applied to a wide variety of cancers. So that's why I'm excited to go to work every, every morning, and, uh, and my team as well. And I'll end just by, I won't name everybody here, but you can imagine the big teams that are involved in, in doing this kind of work. The folks in my lab here in Victoria, also our Genome Sciences Center in Vancouver, Ovarian Cancer Research Team in Vancouver as well, and multiple funding streams as well. But most of all, down here, kind of buried at the bottom there in the slide, but is our patients who've donated samples, blood samples, tumor samples over the years, and have allowed us uh, to understand what the immune system is doing. So I'll stop there. Thank you.